Mars looks like a silent, barren red desert. But it hides a terrifying threat no astronaut can escape – Martians. Nah, it's worse – dust. It might sound odd at first, but Martian dust is razor-sharp, toxic, and relentless. It's filled with chemicals so dangerous, they can destroy not just the technology, but your body from the inside. The dust we breathe on Earth is worn smooth over thousands of years by water and wind. But Mars doesn't have a nice, delightful atmosphere and tons of water like we do. Its dust, called regolith, is angular and cruel. And unfortunately, it doesn't want to stay politely on the ground. It's constantly falling from the sky and covering everything. Every few years, Mars undergoes planet-wide dust storms. They coat landers, vehicles, habitats in a thick, suffocating blanket. NASA's rovers have already been crippled by this invisible threat. Their Opportunity rover, the plucky machine that long outlived its original mission, was finally finished off when dust covered its solar panels. The poor rover couldn't recharge. And eventually, the dust will get into spacesuits. Then astronauts would be in danger, because this regolith is laden with some dangerous stuff. The first is silica – fine, inhalable particles. Once you breathe those in, they can cause an incurable scarring of lung tissue. Next, gypsum – a mineral that, while harmless in small doses, could also cause big respiratory issues when inhaled constantly. One of the most horrifying ones is perchlorates. These are salts that can mess up thyroid glands and create a situation where the body stops producing enough blood cells. And finally, nanophase iron oxides. These are tiny iron particles that can infiltrate the bloodstream, and trust me, that's not going to be pretty either. Martian dust is also exceptionally fine. Individual dust grains are as small as 3 micrometers, which is about the size of a mold spore. For comparison, a human hair is about 30 times thicker. That means it could get in super easily and get deep into the lungs. Once inside the body, the dust isn't easily expelled. There's this sticky mucus in human lungs that serves to keep us safe from stuff like that, designed to trap and expel invaders. But particles smaller than 5 micrometers bypass the lung's natural defenses. You might not even notice anything, while the dust would remain trapped inside you until it eventually enters the bloodstream. You might think we just have to filter it, but regolith is super hard to protect people from. Exposure to it could happen in every imaginable way – through inhalation, contaminated suits and surfaces, eye exposure, which could even lead to blindness, or even accidentally eating contaminated food and water. Sure, astronauts will be shielded inside high-tech suits, but even the best suits won't be perfect. Regolith is small and clings to surfaces even with electrostatic charges and mechanical tenacity. It can sneak into helmet seals and worm its way into ventilation systems. Or say we build a habitat module, but its air filters could clog during a dust storm. Or the opportunity situation might repeat. Solar arrays covered with dust and failing just when life support systems need full power. The consequences for human crews could be catastrophic. But hey, luckily, there's good news. NASA is already thinking ahead about this. First, dust filtration will be essential. They want to fill habitats and rovers with high-efficiency air systems, the ones that would trap even the finest of particles. Of course, they'd still clog and would have to be replaced which means that future missions will have to carry extra filters – enough for years of exposure or even invent self-cleaning filtration systems. There's also this thing called electrostatic repulsion devices. It's technology that uses electric fields to push dust away from surfaces. This could keep spacesuits, airlocks, and life support modules dust-free. Of course, the strictest protocols must be inside habitats. Poor astronauts would have to do home chores literally every day – vacuum their suits, scrub floors, replace air filters. Imagine conquering other planets, only to end up doing home chores again. What's even worse is that we already have space radiation, which is everywhere above the Earth's atmosphere. It's been a huge headache for decades. Adding Martian dust exposure to the mix would make that problem even worse. Not even mentioning freezing nights and the lack of a supportive atmosphere. The grim truth is that there will be no emergency evacuations from Mars. 
the red planet lies at least nine months of travel away from Earth. There are also communication delays of up to 22 minutes each way. So, no matter what happens, astronauts will have to be fully self-reliant. The journey to Mars is going to be messy and super complicated. Space isn't a vacation spot. Your muscles waste away in zero gravity. You experience vision loss because the brain pressures against your eyes. Your blood changes. And that's just what astronauts on Earth orbit go through. And this isn't the only problem NASA is currently facing. Another one is how to send stuff there in general. You can't ship every brick and salad to Mars. It's too heavy, too expensive, and too slow. So, our astronauts will have to DIY their way into survival right there on the spot. We'll have to grow food in red dirt, print habitats out of nothing, and engineer microbes that turn carbon dioxide into breathable oxygen. They'll also have to get used to new, weird living conditions. Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun, right after Earth, and it receives less sunlight than we do. Its gravity is about 40% of Earth's, which means when standing there, you'll feel lighter and your bones will weaken faster. One year there lasts 687 Earth days. But hey, you get twice the birthdays. And yeah, it's livable. It's just wrapped in an unbreathable carbon dioxide atmosphere, dusted with toxic soils, and baked in unfiltered cosmic radiation. Even water exists, frozen at the poles and buried underground, though no oceans. Space living will be part science fair, part medieval farm, and part sci-fi horror. Some space agencies are talking about terraforming. That means changing Mars to be more Earth-like, thickening its atmosphere, warming its soil, releasing liquid water. Sounds like salvation, but it's actually extremely complicated and dangerous. While there are no little green people to greet us on Mars, there might still be life there, in the forms of bacteria ancient, slow-moving, tucked deep underground. Mars used to have entire oceans covering its northern hemisphere. Back in the day, it resembled Earth. It might have had a thick atmosphere, rivers slicing through canyons, rain falling from the skies, and lakes shimmering under twin moons. But somewhere, about 3.5 billion years ago, things changed. The water dried out or froze. The planet's atmosphere thinned into a whisper. Now, all we have from this time are ancient signs, the valleys, the deltas, the hints of methane in the air. They remain like a fossil record. All this means that life could have existed on Mars. Not some big animals or human-like species, that's extremely unlikely, but some tiny organisms. And unfortunately, if they were there, we struggle to find them now. Still, some bacteria are extremely persistent. It's possible that we'll find traces of them somewhere on the Martian surface. That would be our first ever living organisms found outside our planet, and proof that extraterrestrial life is possible and not as rare as we thought. But if we start terraforming, we might destroy these ecosystems before we even find them. We could erase Mars's ancient history, its geological wonders, and its right to exist as it is. Do we really have the right to do all that? just because we want beachfront property on Valles Marineris? It's the Jurassic Park dilemma all over again. We're so preoccupied with whether we could do that, that we don't stop to think if we should. Plus, exploring Mars isn't just about discovering life. It's about understanding Earth's future, the nature of life itself, and maybe even finding humanity's second home. We might also discover that we should put more effort into cleaning up our current home. Meanwhile, Mars researchers remain optimistic. They think that with proper planning and equipment, all the dangers are manageable. The road to Mars won't just demand bigger rockets and better suits. It will demand wisdom, and we'll see how the future unfolds. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.